If you're using tracks on stage, and in particular, if you're using arrangement view to load multiple songs into a set list at a time, then you need to be using a stop track. A stop track is a really incredible, useful utility. It allows you to do this. So I've created a stop clip and a track that I call stop, and I've mapped this clip to the stop button here so that at the end of my song, once it hits the clip, it's going to stop. Now, this is incredibly useful, again, in arrangement view, uh, because you can put songs back to back, and instead of relying on having to press space bar to stop Ableton's playback, you can use the stop clip. But here's the problem. Most people do this, uh, and in fact, I'm gonna link to an entire series where we walk through setting up the IEC driver or Loop BE1, a virtual MIDI driver on PC, uh, and creating a stop clip. I've got plenty of tutorials showing you how to do that, and I've linked to those in the description of this video. But here's where the problem comes. People add in a MIDI controller like this. This is the Oakboard Mini, and they go into Ableton Live, and they say, okay, let me take my MIDI controller. We'll do Command M for MIDI mapping, and I'm gonna click on stop here, and I wanna map stop on my MIDI controller, so let's click stop and we've mapped it here in Ableton Live. And I can get out of MIDI map mode. I can go through here. I can press stop at any point on my MIDI controller. You can see that that stopped in Ableton Live. But here's where the problem comes. Now let me not touch my MIDI controller and go back to Ableton Live and I'll show you what happens. So we're just gonna let it run. I'm gonna get to that stop clip and watch what happens it rolls right through it. So the problem comes when you're creating a stop clip and you decide to add in a MIDI controller into the mix. How do you make it to where this stop button on your MIDI controller also equals stop up here in Ableton Live with this stop clip as well. So that's what we're gonna break down in today's tutorial. Again, before I get started, if you haven't set up a stop clip yet uh, or done a ever created a stop track, then make sure to check out the tutorials below where I show you uh, how to enable a virtual MIDI driver either on, on PC or Mac, and then how to create a stop clip. It's a very simple process. Um, now, the next thing we have to do is plug in our MIDI controller into Ableton Live. And if you've never done that before, I have tutorials showing you how to connect your MIDI controller uh, to Ableton Live, how to set it up for a live performance and enable MIDI mapping. I've linked to that below. But here we get to the point of issue. The problem we're having is our MIDI note in Ableton Live, this note right here, uh, this MIDI clip is sending out a MIDI note and that MIDI note is C3. But if you remember, I also took my MIDI controller here and I mapped this stop button. So if I go back into Ableton Live, let's do Command M. Let's double click on the stop uh, in Ableton Live and let's examine and see what that is. Actually, you see what's happening here. This is MIDI channel 16, note D1 is mapped to stop. And so the problem with this is Ableton Live, you cannot map two different MIDI notes or the same note on different MIDI channels to one thing in live. So practically speaking, I can't go and take the stop button here uh, on my MIDI controller and the stop clip in Ableton Live and map both of those because again, remember they have uh, different MIDI channels, different MIDI notes. One is C3, one is D1, and one is MIDI channel one, one is MIDI channel 16. I can't map both of those things to the stop button in Ableton Live. So, where does that leave us? Do we throw Ableton Live away? Do we get another DAW? Uh, does that mean we have to change our MIDI controller? No. What that means is we have to make sure that both our MIDI controller, so when I press stop, and make sure that this stop clip here, we have to make sure that both of those are sending the same MIDI note. And there's two different ways to do this. Let's talk about the most difficult way first and the way that I don't suggest you do. And that is to actually go and reprogram your MIDI controller to match that stop clip in Ableton Live. The reason I say this is the most difficult is most manufacturers of MIDI controllers how do we put this nicely? They're not great at creating software to let you easily customize your MIDI controller. Now, this particular MIDI controller, the, the Oakboard Mini from Oaktone, is an exception. Jeff makes it super easy to reprogram this controller. Uh, I talk about how to do that in our um, using the Oakboard Mini with Ableton Live course, which I've linked below. And we actually have a template that I built that helps you reprogram that. So, uh, present company excluded, it's typically very difficult to reprogram your MIDI controller, or it's not the easiest thing to do. You've got to dig into software, download software that's not great, or do some weird combination of, of things on the device to actually reprogram that. But in that scenario, let's say you uh, have your Oakboard Mini, you, it's super easy to reprogram, or you have a MIDI controller that isn't easy to program, but you've got it, 
you've got it loaded. You decide, okay, first off, let's go into Ableton Live. Let's figure out what this node is. It's C3. Uh, what MIDI channel is it? This is super important to pay attention to. It's MIDI channel one. Okay. So again, I want to stress, I've got to figure out what note uh, is my MIDI clip sending and then what MIDI channel is that MIDI clip sending on and then I go into my MIDI controller however I do that and I make sure that the button that I want to use in our case is uh, stop is going to send that ex same exact MIDI note in that same exact uh, MIDI channel. The MIDI channel is super important. I see a lot of people do this and say both of them are sending C3 and it's not working. And I go, okay, what MIDI channel is your MIDI controller on? Oh, it's channel 16. You got to change that to match whatever your MIDI clip is there. Okay. Um, that's the hard way to do it, but here's the easy way to do it. Okay. We've got our MIDI co controller connected to our computer. So this is connected via USB to my computer. I'm going to go into Ableton Live and I'm going to do Command M, which is MIDI map mode. Uh, I've already created my stop clip, but we're going to edit that in a second. So I'm going to delete this stop, uh, the mapping that I had on my stop button. And I'm going to go to my MIDI controller because this is super simple to do. I'm going to press stop on this. And now let's go back to Ableton Live. And you'll see that I've mapped this to MIDI channel 16, note D1. And again, you're going, well, Will, we know that. That's how we started, but they're different now. But here's the easy solution. Map your MIDI controller. Okay, whatever your MIDI controller is sending, whatever MIDI channel, whatever note, it might even be MIDI CC. People reach out and go, I can't get my controller to send notes. I can't do a stop track. No, if it does MIDI CC and it functions right when you map to the stop button or whatever command you're using, then you're perfectly fine. So again, in this case, uh, my MIDI controller is sending MIDI channel 16 note D1. So here's what I'm going to do uh, over on my MIDI clip. First, I'm going to go to this note and I want to move this to D1. So actually I actually have to go down. So I'm going to click on it and I'll do shift and down arrow to get there. Okay, so we're on MIDI note D1. And then what's the other thing I mentioned we have to pay attention to? MIDI channel. So note D1, MIDI channel 16. Okay, so now let's go here for our stop track and let's change this to MIDI channel 16. And so essentially what I've done here is I've mapped my MIDI controller first to Ableton Live. Then I'm saying, let's take our, our MIDI clip that we're using for stop and let's change it to match both the note or CC, whatever you're using, um, and MIDI channel of my controller. Both of those need to match, okay? So uh, now let's try this out. So first, let's start back with um, our stop clip. So I'm gonna just play, all right? And we'll let this play and let's see what happens when we hit here, okay? See that our stop clip stopped, okay? And the reason it stopped is the stop clip matches what's mapped to our stop button, which is also what our MIDI controller sends. So now I'm gonna jump back uh, just a little bit here in my timeline, and I'm gonna actually press stop on my MIDI controller, press stop, let's take you back to Ableton Live, and you'll see that it stopped there. So effectively what I've done is I can either use my MIDI clip, my stop track to stop Ableton Live, or I can press stop on my MIDI controller to stop Ableton Live. And the reason that both of these work and the reason they work so well is they're both sending the same exact MIDI command, which is a MIDI note of D1 on the same exact MIDI channel, which in this case is MIDI channel 16. Now do not try, I wanna stress, do not try to match the exact same notes that I have here. I would suggest, as opposed to the first approach, changing your MIDI controller to match your clip, change your clip to match your MIDI controller. So for you, plug in your MIDI controller, map it to live, figure out what command, note, CC, whatever, it's sending and what MIDI channel, then make sure your clip and your track in Ableton Live match that the same. Okay, so that's how we can use a MIDI controller and a stop clip to control and stop Ableton Live at the same exact time. Uh, if you have a question that you want answered in a future tutorial, uh, then send me an email to questions at from studio to stage.com. Maybe you've got an issue where something like this isn't working. You've seen me do something. You want a little more clarity on it. Then send me a question to questions at from studio stage.com. If you want a little extra help solving your problem, then use the links in the description of this video. And you can actually book a either 15 minute call with me or a one hour one on one session with me where we can chat over Zoom. You'll get a recording of your session. I can actually remotely control your computer and we can solve that problem for you uh, live within that segment. And also, if you're an uh, existing from studio to stage student, then you get a massive 50% discount on that one one on one hour rate. So for more info on that, hit the uh, information in the description of this video. If you have a question you want me to answer in a future tutorial, send that to questions at from studio to stage. And with that, hope you have a great week. I'll see you next week and see you on the next tutorial. Take care, everybody. Bye.